It's a beautiful night to fly over the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. We're at 2,000 feet in our Cessna 172, the winds are dead calm, and we're in standard conditions. 15 degrees Celsius at sea level and altimeter 29092. We have a bit of water to get across as we make it towards Kent Island on the other side of the bay. What would happen if we lost our engine? Would we have enough room to glide to the other side and make a landing at Baybridge Airport right in front of us? The first place to look for answers is the POH. For our Cessna, we're actually given what's called a glide ratio. In section 3 of the POH, which is for emergency procedures, we have this chart. It shows us the ground distance we should expect to travel with our engine out from a given altitude. We were flying over the bay at 2,000 feet. If we find the point of intersection on the chart, we see that we should expect around a 3 mile glide. This means that our Cessna should be able to lose 2,000 feet of altitude while traveling 3 nautical miles over the ground. We can express this as a ratio. If we convert to 3 nautical miles, we get about 18,000 feet. Traveling 18,000 feet for 2,000 feet of altitude given up gives us a ratio of 9 to 1. This is our glide ratio. For every foot of altitude we lose, we could travel 9 feet. It's important to keep in mind that this is our best glide ratio. The charts tell us that this is based on our speed of 65 knots indicated, the propeller windmilling, which it'll do when the engine is out and we're gliding, the flaps up, and zero wind. The airspeed shown here is an important one. You've probably seen it before if you trained in the 172. It's known as our best glide speed, VG. It's determined by the airspeed that gives us the least amount of drag. We have two general categories of drag acting on the aircraft. Parasite drag gets stronger as we get faster, so it has a curve that looks like this. Induced drag, on the other hand, which is a product of lift, gets stronger as we slow down, so it has an inverse looking curve. If we add the two drag curves together, we get a U-shaped total drag curve. The lowest point on the curve is our minimum drag speed, or our best glide speed, 65 in the Cessna. Any slower than this, an induced drag takes over to impede us, while any faster and parasite drag becomes the main problem. So our glide ratio with winds calm and other conditions we mentioned is 9 to 1. At 2,000 feet, we should glide 3 miles. Let's cut our engine. We'll pitch up to maintain altitude and slow down to 65 knots, and we timed it in such a way that when we hit 65 and start descending, we're just at 3 miles from land. The engine has quit and the propeller is windmilling. It keeps spinning thanks to the airflow still passing through it. We're on a steady descent, about six or 700 feet per minute, gliding towards the runway at Baybridge Airport. You can see the four white pappy lights to the left of the runway. Even though that indicates that we're too high, they won't stay that way forever. With the engine out, we're on a steeper than normal glide slope angle. Even still, we have plenty of space to clear the numbers and come in to a nice float and engine out landing. Definitely keep in mind that any headwind or any hotter temperatures would make this a less effective than 9 to 1 glide ratio. Let's have a look at the same glide, but this time we're going to hold 55 knots instead of 65. You can already kind of work out that it's not going to go as well. Our descent rate is similar, maybe a little bit better, but at 10 knots slower, we're not traveling as fast over the ground, so we're going to eat up more altitude for distance traveled. Those pappies start turning red when we're a lot further out, and we see we're going towards the drink. We might react to this by pitching up more, trying to stretch our glide as it's known, but remember, any reduction in speed is just going to increase our induced drag, pulling us down further. The correct course would have been to pitch down a bit sooner and establish that best glide speed of 65. As counterintuitive as it is, we'd have traveled further. What about gliding at 75 knots? We're actually coming down at a bit of a faster rate here. We're still eating up too much altitude for distance traveled. As with the slow glide, the faster glide has our pappies turning red too soon. We're going in the drink again. We do, however, have the benefit this time of being able to stretch the glide a bit. If we nose up, which was a bad idea before, now it just slows us down to our proper 65 glide speed. It's still ugly though, and we probably strike some turf short of the runway coming in. Even these small differences show us why our best glide speed is what it is, and knowing your ideal glide ratio can help you plan safe altitudes to fly to cross treacherous terrain like open water or remote mountains. Why don't you do yourself a favor and glide on over to the website, flight-insight.com, linked here and in the description, and check out our suite of ground school courses, private, instrument, commercial, and more. Thousands of pilots like you are building their proficiency learning with Flight Insight. Come join us.